I'm here today with that poor young man, my friend <laughs> Rob Tiller, um, who's visiting from Perth after finding himself out of a job uh, because of promoting my article, for talking about my article on his Facebook page. Welcome, Rob. Well, thank you, Bettina. Thanks I'm for having me. I'm sorry you're here in such dire circumstances. Me too, but it's yeah. nice to see you. <laughs> That's good. And what we're doing today, I want to tell you a story, but also get people involved in what is an outrageous act by, I mean, this body, this Relationships Australia, which openly promotes their, proudly promotes their feminist ideology hmm. in relation to domestic violence on their website. And then they turn around and fire you. Now, Rob, you've been with Relationships Australia for almost a decade. Um, you were very valued by your colleagues, the people you worked with, um, in terms of being able to present a male perspective on what's going on there. Uh, and you got a pay rise last year. I mean, every indication was you were doing really well. And what you did on your private Facebook page was post an article I wrote last year, or the year before I think it was, mm. about domestic violence. Now tell me what happened then. Yeah, so basically, I mean, what the reason I posted it is because the work I do with my clients in a way validates what you were saying. You see men and women who have conflicted relationships who are both violent. Absolutely. Yeah. Uh, you know, maybe not necessarily always violent, but where there's high levels of conflict, it's yeah. generally from both sides. And yeah. then I have to, uh, I guess, tailor my, my treatment to address both sides of the fence. In and that's, I mean, the, the, the domestic violence policy promoted by your organization essentially is arguing, you know, there are barely any male perpetrators, it's almost all one way, males are the dangerous ones, the males are the ones who batter their partners. Absolutely, that it's generally, um, you know, what, what's, what's the three P's, the, the perpetrator, you know, the, the the problem and uh, the patriarchy. <laughs> yeah, that's the problem. Yeah, and and so I mean, you knew that you've had to work within that framework. Yeah, Tell me which how that which, played out in your normal practice, hmm. seeing counsellors, seeing clients. Yeah, well, I mean, with my clients, it's you know, I've I've always taken an interest in in working with men. Yeah. Uh, it's been one of my focus and. And I've come to understand a lot of times that men, when they are, you know, acting out in angry ways or they're they're expressing themselves aggressively, that's generally a bit of a cry from cry for help yeah. from their end. Uh, I'm not, uh, of course, I'm not promoting or or, or validating uh, the any kind of violence. Mm -hmm. I mean, I, I call that out when I see it. But generally, in terms of the normal uh, kind of couples issues that I'm dealing with, it's 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 a two way two way street. And so so there's a process of saying, you know, hey mate, um, there's some things I'm hearing from your end. There's some ways you're expressing yourself. There's some ways you're you're behaving that you need to work on. And I address the female side as well, which which can often be uh, a bit more subtle, maybe more passive aggressive, but equally as destructive. Yeah, and of course, if we're talking about domestic violence now, including emotional abuse and psychological abuse. Well, they keep I mean, expanding we were, the definition. And we're the past masters of that. I mean, we were very good at pressing male buttons. And if we're talking about domestic violence in terms of that broad definition, there's no question that women are right in there hmm. in terms of abusing men. And I'm sure you see that all the time, uh, but but anyway. So, Absolutely. But, so what? That's essentially what I was saying in my article. I had all the latest Australian statistics showing that at least a third of male of victims of domestic violence are male, and that's that's when you ask men, are they victims? But a lot of men won't admit to that, of course. No. And I talked about the 40 years of international research showing that if you ask people who's actually perpetrated violence, you get just as many women mm. as men acknowledging they do that. Well, it was an enlightening article yeah. for me, and it, it really validated my observations that I've, uh, from, from 10 years of professional work. Yeah, and you put that up on your, my article on your Facebook page. Yeah, and celebrating it. Yeah, 
Cool. It's like, hey guys, you know, finally. Finally, yeah. Well, um, and what happened, what I think is really shocking is you were part of a, a men's ne loose men's network where you'd exchange... Professional. Professional men's network where you'd exchange ideas and talk about issues. And one of those men who's got a PhD in gender studies, surprise, surprise, took it <laughs> upon himself mm. to dob you in to your organisation. He took... To the executives. To the executives in your organisation, he got the... The copies of the screenshots, the email, screenshots of the email exchange, and sent them in to one of your managers. I mean, I just think that is extraordinary. Well, it was a huge betrayal. Yeah. Because in the men's in the men's group, you know, we discuss current issues that men are dealing with that we see in the different areas of, you know, because you you have different men from different areas of service provision. You know, Lifeline, Anglicare, for example. Yeah. And professional organizations, we all work with men, and so we, we nut these issues out. And talk about them, yeah. Anyway, so then you get called into a meeting. Tell me about that meeting. Well, so my manager, I had a sense that it was, well, her sense was it was going to be a reprimand. Yeah. And, and so she basically said, keep your head down and, uh, you know, just get on with your work. And so I'm, I'm going into this meeting thinking, uh, well, I might have to argue my case, mm -hmm. um, and they might even, you know, put a, uh, I don't know, a tag on my <laughs> HR file. Uh, sure. um, but about 45 minutes into the meeting, I got clear that uh, they were going to terminate me. Yeah. And they actually forced you to resign. They did. Yeah. yeah. We they said, yeah, we, we'll either fire you or you can resign. Yeah, and, it, and in terms of your future career, that seemed the, the better course to, to, to resign. Well, I, felt, I, I just felt blindsided, yeah. and I was in shock, and I thought, uh, well, okay. Uh, and I gather most of your colleagues are really appalled by this. I, I've gotten so much support. Mm -hmm. I got so many texts, phone calls, they're saying, we can't believe this. Yeah. What's, what happened? And they are protesting to the... Executives. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. No, I've heard. Uh, I've heard that they've. You know, some of them have. Have. Yeah, gone gone to bat on my behalf. Yeah. Um, and I mean, the way they treated you—that you have been working in this organisation for a decade. You've got clients you've been seeing for four or five years. I didn't even let you contact those clients to tell them what had happened. I mean, and that was the hardest part for me because yeah. I've been working. Some of these, uh, some of my clients are quite vulnerable. Um, highly traumatized histories and there wasn't an opportunity to even have therapeutic closure with them say oh, I'll, I won't be working here anymore but I recommend you you go and see this person so yeah. it was it was it was sloppy yeah very sloppy and it just oh. anyway so we, we, we're working on a we you've you've put in an unfair dismissal claim uh, we're discussing legal options uh, but the advice is, I mean, that may or may not lead on to anything. But in, in terms of your future, I, what I'm very keen to do is give you, help you recreate your career. I feel somewhat responsible for all of this. So uh -huh. I'm going well, to be leading this campaign hmm. to rescue Rob Tiller. And <laughs> <laughs> give you a new, a new lease of life in terms of your career. So, and I want all my people who are constantly writing to me saying, what can I do? to get on board this one. So yeah. we, we're going to talk a little about a, a bit about that. But I just want to quickly go back to say... <laughs> well, bless you, Tina. <laughs> yeah, well, I hope so. Well, I hope we can do something. Hmm. And, um, but I'll go into that in a minute, but I just want to explain a little bit about how I know Rob. We've, it was quite a while back. I was speaking in um, West Australia when uh, my book came out on sexual desire. And Rob... And it was like, I was speaking at the uni, actually, of Western Australia, and he got up and... and it was a big crowd. Big crowd. And it was very brave as a young male talking about what it's like to deal with sexual rejection and, mm. and you know, how many men struggle with that. You'd already been doing workshops around that sort of issue. Absolutely, yeah. Um, so we then met and have had this dialogue ever since. Mm. Um, we had great fun one year. I was doing a blog on... Wendy Harmer. Wendy Harmer's a well-known Australian comedian. Hoopla. She, she called, yeah, it was called The Hoopla, and we did a blog, a male-female blog, advising um, 
three women who were starting online dating, and you gave the male perspective and I gave the female perspective. That was we, so much fun. Yeah, it was that fun. was one of my highlights. It was a whole year <laughs> we did that. Uh, but ever since we've had communication, because I've been sending you clients, and that's the interesting thing for To my me. private practice. Yeah, to hmm. your private practice. But I have a lot of men, particularly, coming to me saying they've been to Relationships Australia, they've been to counselling organisation, and it always ends up feeling to them as if the female counsellor, it's usually a female counsellor, is ganging up against them. It's mm. not interested in the male perspective. And you'll be one of the few people I've had in the whole of Australia who I know I can send people to for counselling who will listen to the male perspective and will hear it mm. and will help the women, if it's a, a, a couple, to understand what's going on in his head. And I just think that's so important. Absolutely. Yeah. I, well, I call it, I refer to it translating. You know, I yeah. translate the male perspective to the female and, and vice versa. And, and there's, I forget who did the research, but uh, in a nutshell, men and women equally suck at relating with each other. Yeah. And so that's been my observation. And, and, and I guess you know what I was what I was saying to you the other day. I've spent quite a bit of time training specifically in how to number one validate a female partner's experience, but also challenge them in terms of well, hey, there's there's some behaviors coming from your end that aren't helping your relationship, yeah. and and that that's probably one of my one of my specialties really yeah. and 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 I have to even be careful about how I talk about that in group supervision um, because you know there's there's this idea that well if something's going wrong in the relationship it's probably guess it, who his fault yeah, yeah absolutely I mean like the sexual stuff where mm. you know so many men will say well agree to go to counseling because they want the fact that they're really struggling with sexual rejection to be heard and they end up talking about housework because the counsellor is aligned with her, listens to her concerns. If he did more around the house, you know, I would be more interested in going to bed, which we know rarely is actually a... <laughs> and sometimes yeah. there's, a, there's an element of, phew, we can talk about housework, which means we don't have That's to talk, absolutely. have the tough conversation. <laughs> and, and Rob and I have also... I mean, Rob is also a, a rare breed in that he's a counsellor who's interested in sex and knows something about sex. Mm. Um, <laughs> I mean, there's a famous man who many people will know, uh, David Schnarch. Schnarch? I never know. Schnarch, yeah. Schnarch, yeah, yeah. Uh, who wrote a book called Passionate Marriage, amongst other books, but he, mm. he was really famous for that book, Passionate Marriage. And he's very interesting because he talks a lot about sex and he's very interested in not just fixing sexual problems as a therapist, but... Taking it to the next. What makes sex great? I mean, he mm. asked that question. And, and there's a wonderful essay he wrote where he talked about um, asking a room full of counsellors at a conference and therapists at a conference about who's ever had great sex. And he sees some light bulbs across the room with, with people who clearly know what he's talking about. Mm. And the rest is just sort of blank. Because of course, counselors are taught nothing about sex. They don't not, not, they have very little training in, mm. in even fixing sexual problems, let alone in the whole business of what takes it to that next level. And so Rob's been running, which I was always interested in me, you've been running workshops on that sort of issue um, and you've done things I would never dare do. Go to <laughs> tantric sex workshops, go to really, you know, stuff to explore. What is it that makes sex wonderful? Hmm. And I think that's, a, and it's, so that's why I've also, I've sent some- Stratospheric I sex. I get all these letters from people, right? You know, everyone who's really into sex or was struggling with sex hmm. has all over the, over the years contacted me. And I've never known where to refer them. And you've hmm. had some of my people turn up who, are really exploring this issue and want it and, and doing some sometimes crazy stuff, but they've always been able to come to talk, talk to you. Mm. And and the fact that, that, so that's another sort of territory we've always discussed. So there's a whole range of issues and we're gonna do a whole sec separate video on some of the areas that Rob and I have always had in common. Mm. And what I think is really valuable about the work you've been doing. Uh, and that's why, of course, many of your colleagues are so upset that they've lost that male perspective in that organization and, and I mean, many of the women that's basically with, exactly what they've said yeah hmm. and the women who really have valued that someone hmm. to say hang on you're not listening to what the men are saying here you know hmm. 
Um, okay, but we want to talk just briefly now about what I'm proposing to do. Hmm. We're going to start a crowdfund. I'm very worried about your loss of income for a start. Oh. <laughs> and we'll do a crowdfunder oh, hmm. that we'll, we'll put on Rob's web. I'm going to put Rob's details in the below the video here in the, in the low bar and my website. So we'll be doing a crowdfunder. We're going to have all the details so that people can write letters to this organization saying, what in the hell are you doing? How can you accept government money and promote a, a view of domestic violence that is only followed by a tiny sector mm. of our population, the people who think of themselves as feminists? How does that come to, to govern the way we rule on this particular really important social issue? Because that, that was the issue, is yeah. they, they said you breached our domestic violence policy by circulating Bettina's article. Yeah. Because Bettina's article doesn't line up with uh, our domestic violence, our, ide our ideology. view. It, and Excellent. that's exactly what it is. Yeah, they're promoting ideology. My article included the real statistics from our Bureau of Statistics, from proper research, and they are choosing to ignore that. A lot of the world is moving on from that. Even New South Wales. New South Wales is doing Relationships running, Australia. Relationships Australia and New South Wales is running programs for male victims. victims. Hmm. Um, and, and some of the other states are, you know, much more, more open progressive in their, in their policy, acknowledging hmm. that there, there are male and female violence. Hmm. Um, uh, Victoria is another state which is. Similar to WA. Captured by hmm. ideology. Anyway, what I'm also going to be doing is working out ways of helping you re-establish your private practice. And oh, thank particularly you. also hmm. workshops. I mean, you've done a lot of government um, or corporate based Professional workshops. development. Professional development. Tell me about the sort of subjects you've included in hmm. that. Um, so with the professional development, I'll go to uh, a government or corporate agency and run a day-long workshop. Uh, for example, dealing with difficult people. That might be clients, that might be other colleagues who are... Maybe managers of relationships. Well. <laughs> 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 no, I've been saying to Rob, actually, I think he should be doing some workshops on, you know, living in a post-Me Too world. How do you run a workplace? Mm. Not just how, do, how do we encourage mm. more women to make complaints, but how do males survive in this post-Me Too world? And I think there's real scope for corporate workshops in that area. Absolutely. Yeah. In terms of just, you know, uh, men kind of being real clear about the boundaries yeah. and how they, how they move around the workplace. But mm. you've had a lot of experience in that area. We can show people references from... Um, corporations you've worked for running that sort Absolutely. of workshop. Mm. And um, maybe there are people watching this who have an organization where they could benefit from your services. That'd be great. Um, so it's all going to happen. Mm. And we're going to do another discussion now about mm. another video about some of the other areas where you have real expertise so people mm. can get to know the real Rob Tiller. Mm. And decide to passionately support you. Oh, <laughs> thank you, Tina. Yeah. Okay, Rob, thank you. Yeah. Hmm.